Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first uh, episode of the Nutty Nook Book Club. So this is, for those of you just, well, if you're just tuning in, it's because it's the first episode. But this is a monthly stream that we're going to be doing. Um, so we pick a different book every month. And this month, we picked Fourth Wing and ended up blazing through it and Iron Flame. So we're doing both books this month. I have with me two of... Well, one of them is the most beautiful co-host I could possibly ask for, and the other one is my sister. So, <laughs> here, let's see, it's reversed. Here, to my uh, Bloom World here, to, to my, you know what, left and right gets confusing with the camera. Uh, that is my beautiful wife, Bloom World, who is joining us for this book club. And over there, the one with the uh, the hippie hair, as our father calls it is uh, my sister Suriname. So how, how are you all Hi. doing today? That's a nice version of what dad <laughs> well, calls me. <laughs> I'm trying not to alienate a bunch of our <laughs> listeners right off the bat. <laughs> so uh, so thank you all for deciding to do this with me. I had an idea to do this for fun and because I miss just kind of hanging out and talking with the two of you and then somehow roped you into to streaming this with me or recording it because we're not streaming. But uh, how are you feeling, baby? Uh, Bloomerald, sorry, I guess I could call you that. If I say baby, I'm talking to that one. I'm talking to Bloomerald <laughs> over there, me. okay? <laughs> it's also confusing with the blue hair that she's Bloomerald. Mm, that's that's you true. You would think that Bloomerald would have blue hair? <laughs> yeah. I had your boxes mixed up when we first started this, too, so that was confusing for me. I forgot which. It's like a Joe Biden situation when he. Remember that? <laughs> when he called his wife his sister or whatever. <laughs> oh, this is off to a great start, you all. I hate it. <laughs> anyway, we're talking Fourth Wing and Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. What is the uh, what is the name of this series? Because I'm blanking on it. Empyrean. Empyrean. That makes sense. So let's just kick it off with overall impressions, and then we'll get into it. So uh, you want to play rock, paper, scissors, or do you want me to just call on somebody? Because I've I mean, decided I'm the host of this show. Because <laughs> mine's I was gonna in the middle. Say, you're acting like the teacher, so you might as well just call on somebody. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll let you volunteer first. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in DM mode. That's when I when the when the camera. When you're rolling, like right. I just can't. I can't help it. I'm like, you know what? I like my wife better. So, uh, Suriname, you have to go first. Hey, I'm all for it. I. It's been a long time since I've been as obsessed with, like, a book series as I am this one. Yeah. Like, I physically brings me pain that the third one is... I don't even think it's announced, like, the release date yet. Supposedly, it's supposed to come out this year, 2024, sometime really? near Christmas. Oh, like, wow. second half of the year. I'm God, used to, like, wait. Game of Thrones waiting two and a half decades. I, I don't I know. know if I expect this by the end of the... Is it really supposed to come out by November or December? I think so, yeah. Wow. Because At least that's, that's the rumors that are floating around on the internet. On the interwebs. Well, everything's true on the internet. Well, well, because these two, like, I think she wrote them together. Like, I think she was already pretty much done with Iron Flame when Fourth Wing came out. So oh, I really? just assumed, yeah, I just assumed it would be a long time for the third one because I think this one came out so fast because she just already had it ready to go. Maybe she wrote a trip. I mean, how many books is it supposed to be? All five. Yeah. Five. Whoa. I think Which I've makes me five. very nervous that there's three books to go. Yeah, because stuff's already gone off the rails, I think. I know. So we'll, we'll get into it. Oh, I think I should probably say this, but this is you know, the book club wrap up discussion. So there's going to be spoilers. So if you, yeah. if you haven't, we're going to talk about everything. So if you haven't read it, uh, please don't this, watch this. Don't watch this. Or if you just don't <laughs> care about spoilers, go for it. I guess we can, we can be your spark notes. Is that still around? Is that a dated know. reference? Did that date me? Probably. Just it's probably very millennial of us to oh bring up spark notes. Let's do a quick Google. <laughs> oh, Bloom World is going to be, be our role. Just fact making checker. Sure notes is still around. Yeah. Um, yes, it's today's most popular study guide. Well, then I'm here. Wow. I'm with Yeah. It. All right. Yeah, so you've been in school recently. I, yeah. I definitely have not been out of school for over a day. Oh, my God. Yeah. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bloom World, how did you like it? You, I think, are the most avid reader amongst the three of us by far. Yeah. Yeah. 
So would, what did you think? Would, Your opinion holds more weight. So I did it as audiobooks. Number one, I'm just going to oh, put that out yeah. into the universe. So when I Me started too. seeing stuff come out in written form, I had no idea who anybody was because <laughs> oh, like yeah. the, the whoever and I'm going to be bad because I don't remember who read it, but she did such a great job at reading it that like, oh, yeah. I just knew who it was, you know, like, oh, and then yeah. some, somebody on a discord that I'm in a book discord was like, Zayden did this. And I was like, who are you talking about? Like, it, my brain didn't even process <laughs> yeah. that she would spell Zayden like Xavier with an right. X. So like oh, my brain, yeah. Just, oh yeah, my brain just broke. Um, how, how did you think in your head? Was it with a Z, like Z A D I N? Honestly, I don't even think I processed think about it, it until like I started <laughs> seeing stuff in print, and then I was like, I guess it makes sense that it would be an X. Well, we did have a little bit of this discussion last time Suriname was up here because <laughs> you you read it, right? Yeah, yeah, I read both of them. And so I didn't know how to pronounce. Audiobook. I didn't know how to pronounce anything. <laughs> yeah, what was the one? What was the one you pronounced that was so wrong? Uh, scale is still what I'm gonna call the dragon. Oh, scale, right? <laughs> yeah, it's scale. Um, scale. Nice. I really can't remember, but yeah, we talked about it because I feel like everyone I know that's read this book, almost all of them did audiobook. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to one of my friends and she did audiobook and she said somebody and I had no idea who she was talking about. And I was like, oh, and I'm also just really bad at pronunciations. I feel like I do that yeah. with like all of my fantasy like there. I am an avid advocate that there needs to be pronunciation guides at the back of every fantasy book. Oh, at the yeah. beginning. especially, especially the back. it needs to be yeah. in the front yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> like with the dragon names some of them are crazy oh yeah and sometimes in my head i just do like da -da -da -da. when you <laughs> yeah. like i don't even process it telling me even how to spell like heron what you called something else uh Tarn? yeah it's just yeah didn't you call him something else too no it wasn't Tarn. it was um and Darna? It may have been Rhiannon's dragon. Oh, well, it was Rhiannon, too. We had that conversation. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, yeah. What Fierce. is it? Yeah, oh, that, that's Fierce. not what I said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I said Fjerg. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, I, I also really liked this. I'm kind of glad that I waited to start Fourth Wing until Iron Flame was already out because they worked mm -hmm. really well blasting them out back to back like this. Yeah. So I guess let's just get into, we'll do a quick synopsis. That makes sense, right? For the flow Ooh, of this. I got oh, it. Yeah. You want to do it? Take it away. I already have it up. Go um, for it. So. Oh, notes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, okay, hold on. Are you on smart Not notes? Me. <laughs> <laughs> so fourth wing is basically like the start of a college. So the people who are coming into fourth wing are over the age of 18. Most are 20. Um, sometimes they're a little bit older, but Violet is the youngest of three. So she has an older brother named Brennan, her sister Mira, and then it's herself. Um, her mom is general in this, I guess, Navarian. That's where it takes place, Navar. Um, Navarian continent? I got a little confused whether it was a yeah, country or I did continent. too, actually. I got really confused um, by that. In, Iron Flame because I feel like they were using the terms interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Um but maybe it's like Australia. Maybe the continent is the country. <laughs> right. Yeah, maybe. Right. I don't know. Oh. Um, is there a map? See, there's no map in the audience. I was gonna book. say That's I why. have the I have the book, so keep yeah. talking. I'm gonna look at the map. Okay. Um and Violet's dad was a scribe in Navarre. And part of the scribe's role is to record all of their history. Um mm -hmm. But as we, you know, you come to find out in the series, it's not always truthful history. It's more of how can we make ourselves look good? So, um, uh, American history. Sure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, anyways, Violet's mom pushed her to go into this section of the college. So she was slated, Violet was slated to become a scribe. Her brother Brennan and her sister Mira both went through, um, <clears throat> I guess this, I don't even know what it's called. Like, I use the term gauntlet. It's, it's more like this, uh, this really intense <laughs> training day <laughs> or training, not even day, a couple months, right? No, it's like, 
a year, so, a whole year, the first year. Are you year talking or about like uh, before you cross the parapet or after? No, so like, you know how you have like the scribe college? Yeah. Like, is she just yeah. going into the war college? Yeah, I think yeah, so. I guess. Okay. Or the yeah. Or the so riders. Yeah. Also, you know, just there's a to... difference because there's the because there's the riders that she's specifically going into. Then there's the mm-hmm. infantry that's something different. So I guess there yeah, is. Yeah, but a I split think there's there. I think the infantry is a part of a different college, though. OK, so the um, rider also, college, I guess, is its own thing. Just to because I have the map, uh, we're all wrong, kind of. So oh, yeah. the whole like world is kind of one continent. Like it, it's funny because we mentioned Australia, but it looks like Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, Navaria is... She can't this up. <laughs> you're literally, like... Navaria is, like, most of the northern sector, like, northwest sector. With, Hold it like, up, Sarah. I, I haven't actually seen focused. the inside of yeah, the book. Yeah, neither of us. If I find the map online, I'll try to transpose it over this part. Oh, yeah. It does okay. look, look like Australia. You see what I mean? Like, it does look like Australia, but, like, Navaria is, like, this area up here. Yeah, I, I thought... Here's another, here's another example, because we... In the audiobook, it's Navaria. So this is just another example of Navaria. You know, just but saying things differently. Tyrandor is down here too. Okay. So there's like okay. a little This would have trail. helped me. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot. Right. Because Well, w- I, I read it on Kindle, so I didn't honestly have mm. it to flip back to the map, but there was a one point, I think because they were traveling so much in the second one, and yes. like they were crossing so much distance in such a short time. I was like, where is this? Well, and I had and to come and get the book. The borders became more important because the first one, you didn't really need it as much. But the second one, she really kind of dove into that. So, all right, yeah. we'll get there in a second. Uh, Bloom World, yeah. if you want to continue with your uh, synopsis. Okay. So, she, as we talked about, she goes into the war college and becomes a dragon rider. And part of becoming a dragon rider is you train as basically hand-to-hand combat Mm -hmm. for i guess like the first semester theoretically so like six months and then you go through the gauntlet Mm -hmm. and then and then you get to well your dragon chooses you Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that's i feel like that's kind of when things started going off the rails a little bit yeah is it called the threshing the threshing is that rushing okay yeah. And then once you're bonded to a dragon, then your you know, your life just kind of picks up. Um or falls apart. I mean, yeah, let's be honest. Yes, <laughs> anyway, so like once you're in this war college or once you're in the writer, you're sectioned off into different quadrants and she's mm-hmm. in fourth wing tail section. And her, wow, yeah, look at me. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. no kidding. I was fourth yeah. wing. <laughs> I don't remember the section at all. I remember yeah. the squad. That was about as far yeah. as I got. So there's a squad leader and a section leader. And the section leader's mm-hmm. name is Zayden Ryerson. Remember that. And I'm looking at the synopsis on her web- on Rebecca Yaros's website right now. And I would not have spelled Ryerson that way. Just FYI. Oh, how do you spell it? R I O R S. Yeah. R I O R Sun. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. I had no idea. <laughs> I would have spelled it R E Y E R. I always thought it was R Y. Just went oh. right into R Y or something. Yeah, I guess that too. Wow. Um, but then her section leader is a cla- a childhood friend named Dane Atos. All right. And right. We are, at, well, at least I'm not going to be offended if you start reading this book and you're like, I hate Dane. Oh, we all, everybody because, hates Dane. Let's just throw yeah. it out there, right? Everybody <laughs> yeah. Hates Dane, right? <laughs> yeah. We, uh, Wolfkins and I have a, have a friend who's reading fourth, who just finished fourth wing yesterday. And she's like, I want to toss Dane out a window. And I'm like, well, at the end mm-hmm. of book two, he still doesn't get tossed out of a window. All right. At the but, end of book two, he's a little bit better, but yeah, Dane can. But Dane it's still, go, at that point, you're just so sick of him. You're just yeah. don't yeah, even care. Yeah. It's true. He, he has a long <laughs> fall from grace before he has yeah. any kind of, any kind mm-hmm. of redemption really. But yeah. Well, also, I feel like if you're a Dane fan, I judge you a little bit. Yeah, you should I probably turn this you. off because I'm assuming that we're going to be crap talking him a lot. It's mm-hmm. it is not. It, I think I would like to just interject here and point out that it wasn't just a childhood friend; it was her best friend. Yeah, like her best oh, friend yeah. in the world, which is becomes important because that is not how they end up. 
for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think it's also important to point out that at the start of the first book, she had a huge crush on him. Oh, yeah. She oh, was like yeah. in love with him. Like, oh, yeah. childhood best friend. I'm going to marry him. You know, all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And like, mm -mm, no yeah. way, Jose. He literally no had, way. he had like one job. He could have, all he had to do was be just slightly nicer to her and they could have been together. Instead, yeah. he oh, yeah. chooses the path of just he, the exact opposite of that. Because he likes oh, yeah. her, too. I mean, he's, he's just kind of in love with her, too. And instead, he's like, you know what would be fun? <laughs> Let's just make her life her a living hell away, instead. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Every well, decision and, Dane makes pushes her further away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our friend was talking to us yesterday about it. And she was like, it, him not listening to what she was saying about herself bothered me the most yeah well, yeah so like she she was telling him like no i'm going to do this and he was like no you need to leave yeah mm -hmm. and it and so you know like i don't want to do huge spoilers because uh, don't worry about it this is a this is a spoiler cat we already gave him the warning if they're still with us, I know, they're but still I, with us. like some <laughs> things like i don't want to like spoil like some okay. things i want them to like experience for themselves like i'm gonna spoil some stuff yeah. And I'm not so going to do it on purpose. If you're enjoying this and you don't, it, go read the book and come back. We'll be here. Everything lives forever on the internet. Yeah, we're Anyways. not going to. We exist in these chairs. Well, I, I will say this. <laughs> well, yeah, we. I don't. I don't move. This is where yeah. I. Bloomerall just has like my food come down. She sends the the kidkins the down shoot. the stairs. With it. Kidkins. <laughs> kidkins is so cute. Yeah. That, <laughs> her name's Kidkins. She's not this weekend. She's on a thousand. Oh God! <laughs> this, yes, we're just lucky she's actually like taking a nap to let us do this. But she's <laughs> yeah. been. Oh, anyway, like um, baby. one yes. thing I thought Very was really cool. interesting because what what happens is, and I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm just gonna tangent real quick. It's it's probably obvious that uh, Zayden kind of becomes the love interest, right? What I think is very interesting about these two, though, is just it goes back to what you were just saying is how they both kind of treated Violet mm -hmm. because Dane just was constantly like, you can't do this. You can't do this. And I think it's important to point out because I think we forgot it in the, uh, in the lead up. She's like frail, right? Like something's wrong with her. Yeah. Like her bones are underdeveloped or something. So uh, I always imagined her like with like bird bones or something. Like she bruises and breaks really easy. Yeah. Yeah. I like so, she's anemic and like brittle bones. I don't yeah. know. There's mm -hmm. something going on. But yeah, she is very frail. Like that's I feel like that's chapter one where she's like, I've spent my life in in like mending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and and it thing. becomes right. it becomes important because she can't even like keep her seat when she becomes a writer because of like her her thigh muscles or something aren't strong enough. Yeah. But, and that's why she was training to be a scribe because she even though like her brother right. and sister were going into the dragon into the writer's quadrant. She was like, I'm never going to make it yeah. because she can't physically do it. Yeah. And oh, and Dane it's also just important can't to get know over that. What is it? And Dane just can't get past that. Oh, no. Yeah. Like he never sees her as something besides her, her flaws mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. one. Right. Right. It's also important to note that um, Rebecca Yaros pulled a Disney and had to kill one of her parents. Like, and her brother. Well, yeah, but like, there's not a lot of Disney movies that have like both sets of like both parents still alive, and this book starts off but with. The, this is why we got to get through this to get to the theories because maybe he's not dead. The dad. The dad. Oh. <gasps> Keep going. The dad is the is the is the um leader of the okay. villain. Yes. Just go, okay. <laughs> it's going off the rails. It's oh. going off the rails. You got to keep okay. going. Okay, okay. no, you actually, I had that thought, and then I was like, no, she wouldn't do that. There are three books left in this series. I think she could do whatever she wanted. I know. Also, can we just make a note that I am shocked that she has wrote such a great fantasy book when she was a romance writer? Oh, I know. Like, she was, yeah. a, like, a, and the romance in the books are good. Mm -hmm. But, like, mm -hmm. the fact that the world is this developed from a writer, I have to give, like, major kudos to oh, Rebecca for sure. Yaros. Her world building is better than some of the just fantasy world builders I've read I agree. before. Like, yeah. her world building is great. She would be helped with a map. But 
uh, the world Which feels alive. She has alive. In, well, she does. In, her, <laughs> in her defense, she has. <laughs> sure, I'm not. That wasn't a dig. <laughs> the yeah, it's it's it feels alive. And yeah. what I think is really important for for stuff like this is, especially when you're dealing with magic, because I read and play a lot of fantasy, the, the strict rules with how magic works is really important. It really helps mm-hmm. cement your fantasy. And she has a very clear line about where magic comes from, like what what magic is channeled appropriately, and then the way that you use magic in a corrupt fashion. And I think... And she sticks to the rules. Like she doesn't make things up right. and, and go back and forth, which it, it's it happens sometimes in oh, fantasy sure. novels. You're like, that's not what you said. <laughs> right. So. And I think also not just the world building, but I think the characters are so well developed because mm-hmm. I feel like it's really easy, especially with like side characters and background characters for them to fall into like a trope sure. and for them to be like, well, this is the funny character. So well, there there's, is the one even, guy that's just there's trying Riddick. to constantly get yeah. laid. I mean, <laughs> Which I adore. I don't mind. I love Riddick. Sure. But it's it's very like everyone has layers. Like even the mm-hmm. side characters, there's layers to them and they're not just one note. Like and I feel like yeah. it's super easy to do, especially with characters that are more in the background and not like the focus of the story. Sure. So not only is her world building just excellent, but like I genuinely care about all of the characters. Yeah. And I would say, like, with everything that happens in Fourth Wing, I am more upset about the things that are happening with the side characters than mm-hmm. may necessarily, like, Violet, Zayden, Sometimes, or yeah. Right. You know, yeah. like, yeah. like they're, and again, this is a major spoiler, something mm-hmm. huge happens towards the end of, within the last eight chapters of Fourth Wing, and I legit was, like, driving home and almost started crying. Oh, I because Everyone yeah, knows what we're talking I about. legitimately bawled my eyes out. And like, I'm not a super emotional reader. I never have been because I think it's just, I don't know. But well, there, you're, you're, there are like five books that have ever made me sob. I mean, your heart is basically cold. So, I mean, you're not That's an emotional fair. person. That's fair. <laughs> it is literally this one got to you from though, the huh? mountains this of one Eastern Kentucky. Yes. Like, it literally, I, I was in like, I think I went through grief and that's such a hard thing for mm. like you to feel so connected to a character. And when they die, you feel like you've lost somebody. Yeah. 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 For and sure. like, I remember yeah. I was laying in bed and my friend was on her way over and she was like, you have 50 pages in, I need you to finish it before I get there so we can talk about it. And I remember just when she got to my house, I was laying in bed and I was just sobbing and it was, ugh, it yeah. still hurts. Yeah. So, I mean, I oh, don't have a cold heart. Well, I'd like to think I don't have a cold heart, but like, I don't you're the, respond. You're the nicest person yeah, anybody knows. Okay, listen, like you are, you are the most empathetic person that any of <laughs> anyone in the family knows. Okay, sure, but like, I don't cry with like books. Like mm-hmm. books will make me paranoid, and I will like have to like That's Joey true. put them in the freezer and like don't touch them for a little <laughs> bit. But like, <laughs> that is true. So. <laughs> this is what I this is what I love about my beautiful wife. When it comes to human characters, they are basically fodder for her. In stories and movies and TV, they're like someone dies and I'm like, oh my God, I look over and she's like <laughs> But if a dog sneezes, it's over. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I won't even recommend books and shows to her if they're animals, like, as a character, for the fear that something might happen to them. Yeah. No. Well, you heard what happened. Okay, talking about off the rails, you heard what happened with Game of Thrones when we first started it, right? Suriname? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember this. Like, I had to... I sat yeah. on the steps for, like, the first... Because of the dire wolf. Because Man I was like, something's going to happen. And... <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... She's like, but then what it got worse because, you know, to her credit, she stuck that series with, you know, she stuck through it to the end. Every one of those damn wolves die. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. like every one of them, spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> but except yeah. for. Yeah, someone's watching this and they're like, they're like, I, I've read Fourth Wing. I don't need to get spoiled. And then we just spoil Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's um, oh, my God. So one thing, kind of where we left off, I think you were talking about. um the dragons choose you and what's what's most important here is that two dragons end up choosing uh violet which 
did it has it never happened before or just super rare? I can't remember. It, I don't think it ever I don't think happened, it's right? ever happened. Yeah, I don't think it has. Because everyone's real mad about it. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Everybody's real, real mad about it. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's talk about the dragons. So there's Tarn, right? So he's a black dragon. Mm-hmm. And then Andarna's gold. Yeah. And no one really well, knows she, what that means yeah. at first. And but it's just, in fourth it's, wing, she's gold. Let's right. let's make that distinction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fair, fair, because we do have a little bit of a of a transformation. Because as we learn, the gold dragons and what are they called, feather tails? Yeah, yeah. Those are just babies. <laughs> like yeah. they're just like, I guess, adolescent dragons, and it's like a big no no really for them to really be out because the Empyrean, mm-hmm. which the series is named after, that's like the Council of Dragons, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's like this council that kind of sets the laws and rules of the dragons, and not only are they really not supposed to be out the goldens but they're definitely not supposed to bond and right. uh this one ends up bonding with with violet and we we come to find out later why that was allowed and we'll we'll get into that in a little bit because i thought that was a really interesting twist to to how that came up uh mm-hmm. but yeah so so what do you think about the dragons because i think their relationship between the two of them is my favorite part of the second book for sure yes so what do you what do you think? I Let's love talk about the dragons I, for a minute. I love that they first of all, I love that they're characters. Like I love that they talk yes. and they have their own personalities. Uh-huh. And Darna is everything to me. She's so like cute. I you know that those things like I would die for that character. I would die for Andarna. Yeah. And like it's so funny because it's almost like she's Tarn's child that he never wanted. It's exactly like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like he would, he is like, I'll protect you. Like, I've got you. And then anytime she talks, he's like, I can't stand her. It's like, it's like a stepdad <laughs> who, like, it who literally really, is, she, he's yeah. like, really wants to be with Violet, but he, he knows to do that. He has to take has care to of it. Darna. I know. Uh, I just think so they're great. hilarious. Like, most of the humor for that book for me comes from the dragons. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Because Taryn is super grumpy and gruff. Oh, yeah. And Darna is what you'd imagine from a kid. But my favorite part is in Iron Flame, when she goes through her transformation. She essentially oh, becomes a teenager. So it's funny. The best. I imagine Kid Kins to be in Darna when she's a, I know, it's a so teenager. Scary. It's so funny. No, she's not. She, we're not waiting until teenage. This, I know, she's already This there. weekend, she was teenage in Darna. She did Good like, God. this a little hand flip and rolled her eyes at us yesterday at this. I love it. Duh. We get that all the time. Like that's the problem. (laughs) But yeah, those two together is just hilarious. Sorry, go ahead. So the only thing I was going to say about Tiern was, and I, it's interesting that they do, didn't do it with Andarna, but like when she first bonded Tiern, I feel like he talked for like, two minutes about like who he, who he is descended from mm-hmm. and i feel mm-hmm. like yaros put that in the book because like we really need to pay attention to it mm-hmm. but i also feel like because nobody else talked about it like none of her friends told them about like their dragon's descendants or like aunt Arna wasn't like i am descended from here's right. 27 names that like i'm definitely not going to remember especially from an audiobook perspective mm-hmm. sure but like i really want to know why that is so important like why do i, I need think... to know who his parents are and then who his right. grandparents are and like i almost I wonder if like they like if all the dragons communicate to that to their bonded but you just don't share it. And I think maybe it's the lack of that from Andarna. That's, that's more. That's like, what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I like think not it's necessarily that, that his lineage is important, but like that we don't know hers is because more let's, I guess let's just go ahead and jump ahead and get spoilers. Cause we do come to find out towards the end of iron flame that, and, and Darna is, cause once she goes through her transformation, the gold scales mm-hmm. go away and she, she looks black uh, but but she's not actually. She is what is it like a violet, a purple, or something like that? Yeah, something, she's like yeah. the first purple dragon to be born in like six hundred and fifty yeah. years mm-hmm. or something. So yeah. I think you're Three onto something there, time. Bloom World. I, I just think that it's the lack of that information from Andarna that's supposed to be a little foreshadowing that mm-hmm. will hold up. 
something's going on with her. And I mean, she, I think, is one of the most interesting characters, even though she spends yeah. the vast majority of Iron Flame sleep. Like she's not even in the most of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when she wakes up, oh, it's so good. And I love when she keeps waking up while she's sleeping and she's like grumpy teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. Taryn's like, I, I hate you. <laughs> Please, okay. I want you to go back to sleep. This is this is a theory that my my friend told me. Um, and it's related to Indarna, I promise. I'm not just jumping off the rails. So off the rails is fine. We love we hate the So rails. again, spoiler alert. So we find out that it is possible for somebody to have two signets. If they are, mm. if they are bonded from a descendant, uh, if their dragon was bonded to a direct relative, so like a father, grandfather, that. something like that. So you would kind of think, because nobody's ever bonded two dragons before, nobody knows if Violet is going to have that second signet. Yeah. Some people think she's already awakened to her second signet, and they think that it is that she can communicate with the dead. So oh. in the second book, Violet gets tortured from um, the vice commander that comes in. There and is. Yes. And as she's being tortured, she sees Liam. And she's she makes a comment several times that it seems like he is so real. Like, it doesn't feel like she's hallucinating. And oh, he, she yeah. can feel his touch. So some people think, and because Indarn is asleep at this time, that her second signet is that she can not only, like, communicate with the dead, but she can, like, interact with the dead. So that and would so, have been her actually doing that instead of hallucinating. Instead of hallucinating. So... What if, again, spoiler alert, at the end of the second book, Violet's mom sacrifices herself to kind of give them time so that they can survive? Sure. What if we discover a lot of these secrets that and mysteries that we see because she starts communicating with her mom, who no longer has oh. a reason to keep these secrets? That would be super cool. Or if her dad is really dead, her dad. But if that is her second signet, you would think she would have seen her dad at some point. Especially being tortured, like you would think mm-hmm. if you're going to go to this closest her. person, you would see your dad. So that's why I also at the beginning was like, is he dead? Because he might not be dead. All right, I need, so, your, I need your thoughts on this, Blue. That, it makes sense because when Andarna is a featherling, she can pause time. Mm-hmm. Not for a lot, like, it's yeah. not like I'm going to pause time for like three hours. It's like right. I can pause time for 45 seconds. Mm-hmm. But that second signet does kind of make sense. So when I was reading that part, one of my favorite book series is Outlander. Mm-hmm. And sure. during that time, the main character, Jamie, is tortured in the first book. Like really bad. Mm-hmm. And he is talking to Claire. And Claire can time travel. Right. Claire's a time traveler that like comes 200 years from the future to the past. And then that's how they meet. And so you, while you were talking, I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense that she could do that because it's almost like she's going back into like kind of that alternate dimension or that alternate mm-hmm. reality where like Liam is still alive and she's having a conversation with him. Mm-hmm. When I was reading the books, I actually thought that Taryn's previous writer, Naolin, maybe, or Naolin, or I don't, however you want to say his name. I think it was Naolin. Don't ask me. Was the one who was creating the venom. Because Taryn wouldn't bond for five years, Mm -hmm. which dragons can do whatever they want to do. They can choose to bond or not to bond. Right. But it's so He was like super tore up up about this guy. What? He was super tore up. Like something that happened yeah. with Naola and made mm-hmm. him not want to bond again. Right. Yeah. And the, yeah. and I feel like the thing that we need to talk about with Taryn is that he is very lawful. Like he mm-hmm. wants to follow the rules at all times. He doesn't really want to go off the rails that much. Like he will do what he needs to do to protect his writer, but he also mm-hmm. is like, these are the rules that have been set in place to he, keep he us He very safe. much works within the Imperium's laws. Right. And and as far as, you know, promises he's made to his uh, his bonded dragon, Sigail, mm-hmm. who just so happens, by the way, to be Zayden's dragon. Um, but, yeah, there's some big secrets that he keeps because of just promises he's made in the past. We were right. able to find out. So And so, like, I thought that he like he didn't bond for those five years because he was kind of. 
like grieving over the fact that like he he lost his writer but then his yeah. like he learned that his writer was alive and he learned that his writer was you know bringing essentially like zombies to life yeah you know sure. yeah. and so like i thought it was him who was doing it but i'm wondering if violet's dad and him are doing it together See, I am in the uh, camp. I don't know that if Violet's dad is the leader of the Venom, I'm in the camp that Violet's dad is Venom. So there's a there's a division on the internet, but it makes sense to me. Like, there's, um, I think one of the beginning chapters, like where it tells you like a snippet from a letter or something, mm -hmm. um, is a letter from Nolan to Cadet, or not to Cadet, but to General Soringale that says we still have not found a cure. There is no cure. There is only control. Yes. yes. And people thought that after the events in Iron Flame, that may have been about Jack Barlow. But what if it's about Violet's dad? Because you, um, because her mom also had one of those daggers on her desk when they go and like infiltrate uh -huh. her office in the first book. Also, if you think about it, if Violet's dad was Venon before Violet was born and they conceived Violet, it could explain why she has such brittle bones, why her hair is white, and mm. why she might have this untapped, like this lightning power that's so rare and the ability to bond two dragons. Well, we had we had discussed this, just the two of us, Blue, about her being brittle somehow being tied to maybe that. Like, mm -hmm. did perhaps, if that was her dad, if he had gone Venon, was he... Was he stealing from her when she was a you see for the longest right, time yes. I was convinced that uh her mother killed her dad. I was mm -hmm. convinced about that until like halfway through Iron Flame. Yeah. And then towards the end, she makes it pretty clear that she actually truly loved her her husband. But yeah. I was convinced that General Sorengale offed her husband because he was getting too close to the truth. That was mm -hmm. my theory up until like literally halfway through the second book. Mm -hmm. But yeah. With what you've said, with it being, if that is a signet she has, being able to communicate with the dead, there's no way her dad's dead because that's right. who would have visited her there. Yeah. So it's relying on that being true, but yeah, no way. Right. But I think it just, it makes sense. And mm -hmm. I think even if that's not what her second signet is, I think there is something about her that is able to communicate with the dead because I don't think that she just hallucinated that and also if you think about it if she was hallucinating that oh, Liam. like she could hallucinate anybody yeah like she yeah. could be hallucinating Zayd in there but she could also be hallucinating her dad so I yeah. feel like she does actually communicate with the dead whether or not what that is that if that's a signet or just something else that comes from being bonded I'm glad we know. saved these discussions for the, for this because this is blowing my mind I know well I saw this I knew the I didn't want to tell you the last time I saw you about this theory, but um, there was another one I saw that said that it's not her dad that's Venon, but that something almost like Violet was born Venon for, yeah. because of something, but I can't I can't remember the details of it. I wish I would have watched the TikTok before I got on. That here. was it, Blue. We were talking about maybe that uh, going back to her mom being her mom's still a terrible person. We were thinking that maybe they were doing experiments on Violet for some reason. That's what we were talking about. I don't remember who, what's the guy's name that's been Nolan. with her since she was born. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. There's something because there. it also like, cause after we find out Jack Barlow is Venom, it kind of alludes that he's been Venom for a while. Mm -hmm. Like there's no like turning point. Cause when they were on the mat, he was draining her. Yeah, but yeah. like I couldn't tell he was Venon, so I feel like you could walk around and be Venon, and you no one would know sure. until you started draining and maybe like your eyes started turning. But and just well, again, that was Violet's tip off for mm -hmm. Jack mm -hmm. because his eyes were so bloodshot. Yeah, and apparently, like that's one of the things. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I could have sworn at the start of book one when she came across Jack Barlow on the parapet that his eyes were already. Like bloodshot. Yeah, I really think that he's been venom, if not from the beginning, beginning, sometime between Parapet and when he died. Yeah, like, I or think between too. Parapet and they and them sparring. Yeah. But he just had so much hate in him that it made, like, it just yeah. makes sense that he had been venom for a while. 
I and also hate him so much. So yeah, much. let's talk about Jack also for a minute. And just, I'll, I guess I'll give the definition. If you're with us this far, you've probably read the books, but Venon basically, instead of channeling power through their dragons or something, they get it from just other people, right? They steal it from people or the ground. And the earth, the yeah. Earth, um, which is considered kind of a taboo way to get your maggot. But yeah, but let's let's talk about Jack, Jack friggin' Barlow <laughs> for a oh minute. God. Worst character, right? Oh, actually, who annoys really, you more, him or Dane? I really think Dane annoys me yeah. more than Jack Barlow. I think he does. Too. Because the thing is, is that Jack Barlow is an asshole and he has never been anything else. Like, he doesn't pretend to be anything else but this fucking psychopath sure. <laughs> that just kills people for no reason. But Dane acts all high and mighty like he's this good person. And yeah, good Dane point. definitely annoys me more. But I, I, Varish is also another one that, like, well, Varish every is the time worst, yeah. I saw his name, like, I had a visceral reaction. Yeah. All right, Blue, what about you? Dane or, uh, I guess, Dane, Varish, or Jack? Well, who do you hate the most? I mean, that's really like asking, like, <laughs> which apocalyptic horseman do I want coming to dinner? Like, it just... Not famine. Nope, not him. Nice job. Um, I, I don't know. Thanks. Like, I feel like out of the three, Dane is my least hated. Just sure. because of the yeah. fact that, like, he does, gr- like, he does choose to change in book two. Mm-hmm. Like, if he was going to yeah. be truly as evil as he could be, he wouldn't have changed. He would have right. just been like, sorry but, about your luck. And for but the has most he changed? Part, Do uh, what? I'm in, I'm in camp. Has he changed? Because I, I feel like it was a switch. I don't know. And I understand like he he saw the truth or whatever, but it just felt very like he just dropped everything and went to. Well, I, I still I, just I really still thought like that Dane. was in character, because if you think about it, Dane always meant well, at least from his perspective. Mm-hmm. And everything he had done had been to keep Violet safe. And while it was a yeah, he saw the truth. There was a switch but in that moment. He really stayed to character. He did what he did to make sure Violet was safe. So I still felt That's like true. that was still like from where he was coming from made total sense for his character. If he hadn't, then I would have been like, dude, what is wrong with you? Right. But yeah. Okay. So, so then it comes down to Jack or Varish, who are basically the two main villains so far. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Outside of the I, general venom threat. the cor- And like the government. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so. I oh, she's think, thinking. I know. I'm scared. I think Varish is going to be my top bad guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Simply because of the fact that, like, he reminds me of, like, an assassin. Like, I'm going to get this information out of you, regardless of whether or not you have this information. And I truly hate people like that. Mm -hmm. Like, if I tell you I don't know anything, Mm -hmm. okay, you can look at me a little, like, skeptically. But, like, if you continue to come at me and, like, threaten my life, like, leave me alone. You know? And, like, Jack is just... Blue would not do well under torture. (laughs) She would be very, very obstinate. Yeah. Yes. He's like, I don't be mad at me. Person. Are you mad at me? If I tell you the <laughs> truth, will you not be mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you I don't know the answer to this, can you leave me alone, please? Um, I've got stuff to do. Yeah, you're interrupting my reading time. Go away. Um, <laughs> now, at least Varish, right, so far, has had the decency to just stay dead, right? At least when yeah. he died, he stayed dead. Jack, yeah. on the other hand, was like, psych here i am for for round two and i'm Mm -hmm. i'm worse now so i don't know if this is an unpopular opinion but i felt like iron flame was so so much was going on and i was so anxious at every turn when i found out jack barlow was alive i was like i don't have time for this (laughs) (laughs) like i wasn't even like afraid i was like who cares? There's so many other that. things going on right now. But uh, can we talk about the fact that like he can be killed with orange juice? Like, <laughs> is this huh? Rebecca yes. Garros's way of just telling us that she hates orange right. juice? Like she just wants. <laughs> well, it's like, and he's still alive. It's like just give him some orange juice. Yeah, you should have just given exactly. Him some orange juice in the very what beginning. are we doing here? You want to control oh. this venom? Just give him orange juice. Like, <laughs> remind me. Jack, about he that. doesn't make it out of Iron Flame, right? Like he, they do get him a 
No, he, he's in Iron Flame because he's in a right, cell. Right, right. But he end. doesn't. Is he still alive in the end? Yeah. yeah. Because oh, my God. You're right. Him. You're right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot. They did leave him alive. They did kill his dragon, but because he's Venom, he stayed alive. He doesn't alive. need it. He doesn't yeah, need he it doesn't because, need his dragon. I forgot. Yes, because the the epilogue mm-hmm. kind of is with with Zayden because the epilogue's yeah. always from Zayden's perspective. Yeah, mm-hmm. which so. I think from an audio book perspective is so stupid. Okay. Oh so this my is, god. Okay, go for it. This is the biggest nitpick. Key out of me. <laughs> Does it keep the same reader? Is that why? No, they bring oh, in one changes. male reader just for the epilogue in both books. <laughs> if you're gonna but, have. If you're going to have a female reading the whole book, she can do a male voice for the entire epilogue. I do not need to hear a man come in and tell me their thoughts. Here's the thing. And I kind of agree with her on this. Now, this is just when a there's, feminist rage. <laughs> well, when there's a book, when there's a book that is um, much like the book that we are going to be reading for February, where it has like a chapter from a girl's perspective, a chapter from a boy's perspective, I do appreciate when they have like different readers for those. But in Balloon Roll's defense, he only reads the epilogue, but he still gets cr- like what she hates is like on the cover. It's like uh, read by this person and this person. She's like, he read a yeah. hundred words. Okay. That's I, I understand that. I thought the beef was mostly just because, but if he gets the full credit, I agree. That's, I will that's say annoying. he's not as good as her narrating the book. Like, and I don't know if well, it's yeah, just she read you- like, 400,000 words. I just the way he reads it isn't how I imagined Zayden sounding. Zayden sounding. Mainly because she mm-hmm. has voiced Zayden the whole time. But yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> well, that's a good point. Yeah, that is a good point that I didn't think about different. is that she's voiced Zayden the whole time. Yeah. So yeah. she could just Literally, voice him for the epilogue. Yeah. This dude that's comes in to point. read a chapter. I'm like, you do not need as big of a we paycheck as I'm sure that you're getting for reading this one chapter. It's not that important. That is a well, good point. I would be annoyed by that too. I w- I didn't understand is, at first, but I'm I'm yeah. in your camp now. Well, he also just it's just the way he delivers his lines, like the cadence of his voice is even just a little mm-hmm. different than how. So it's yeah. just it is a little jarring. It's a little jarring. I could see but, that. But yeah, I mean, if he had been doing it the whole time, not it mm-hmm. wouldn't have. Because I read a Star Wars book. Uh, it was called I think The Princess and the Scoundrel, and it was Han and Leia, and they had a different reader for each, and that worked great. Plus, yeah. the guy they got to do that sounded just like uh, Harrison Ford, which was oh, that's cool. But yeah, for for this, it was just it was it was very jarring at the end. Okay, so we're gonna do thirty seconds of snippets for the for the just just to hear the delivery. Okay, <laughs> I wonder if it'll pick it up. I hope so. A quote from Major Frederick's Modern Guide for Healers. In the event that you come across a poison you do not recognize, it is best to treat with any and every antidote. Either way, the patient will die. But at least this way, you would have learned something. Okay. So just in that little clip it, Mm -hmm. did you hear it, first of all? Number one. Yeah, it came through actually really good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Number two, there was so much emotion yeah in that in her reading and that was a a reference from something else mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and oh, then listen great. to this dude chapter 39 zayden from the last words of fen ryerson redacted you're all cowards yeah i don't like this See, i don't like him i mean I like it's him. It's nothing against like the the guy, the talent, or anything like that. It's just it does not jive with the rest of the audiobook. Yeah, no, at all. It sounds too forced. Like it sounds very. He like, reads. He reads Zayden like a a little emo. I feel like. Like yeah, like a vampire fan fiction. It, it, he reminded me more yeah. of like Edward or something from Twilight mm-hmm. than Zayden yeah. Ryerson. For sure. Yeah. I agree. I don't like that. It just, it bothers me. Like, if he was reading his parts throughout the entire book and it was a blended thing, Mm -hmm. all right, Right. fine. I would have, like, become accustomed to what your voice sounds like. But then all of a sudden, like, you just pop in. And he also doesn't do epilogues. She's just like, here's the, like, last chapter, chapter, like, 38 to 39. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is really an epilogue, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I will say. It was just jarring for me. Yeah. 
I will say if you guys subscribe to her um, email newsletter, she has given like holiday bonus um, info for Violet and Zayden. Is that not I in the back of that special edition book you have or no? Because the one um, I, saw I only ha- have the special edition of Fourth Wing, not okay. of Iron Flame. There, they have a ho- I saw it actually at Half Price Books. They had the holiday version. I think it made it into a print. But you said it, you can get it on the newsletter. Yeah, she sent it, it right in now. the newsletter. If you all find the holiday version of Iron Flame, or like any kind of uh, sprayed edges, I will pay oh, you back. Okay, gotcha. Um, Madison actually, her boyfriend for Christmas got her the um, like the first edition where they had the dragons on the on the sprayed edges. Oh, cool! Paid oh, like cool. three hundred dollars for it. What? Yeah. But wow. it's like a first edition. Like they only printed like fifty is, or a hundred of them. No, it's not signed. She but, should get that signed. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've been on. I've been on like a lot of newsletters looking for authors to go on tour and I'm really hoping Rebecca Yaros does cause yeah. I would love to meet her. That'd be great. So let's, let's talk. Cause I think we've danced around it long enough. Uh, let's talk about Zayden and Violet. I mean, it's kind of the core, you know, central story of the book and we haven't really talked about it yet. So I'm going to defer to the women okay. here and say, what's your opinion on Zayden as a character, as a love interest? Uh, and I'll just let you. I'll let you go with it. <laughs> I would drink that man's bath water. <laughs> I would do anything that man told me to do. <laughs> oh, my sister, everybody. <laughs> he I, don't, I, don't, is, I don't know if I want to ask Blue now. I don't know if I can handle the answer. Oh, I, I mean, you knowing me, I would not. I, I cannot think of two people. Two people more different than you and Zayden. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, him and Violet are are kind of in that you know butting heads kind of thing. But yeah, you could not put up with Zay. You would be you wouldn't work in the military because she can't First she can't all. deal with anybody telling like, her what to do. Even if it's just like common <laughs> phrases, I'm like, hey, reach me that. She'll be like, excuse me, don't you How mean? Dare you. Can you reach me that, please? And I'm like, just give me. Give it to me. I'm bleeding. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, that's her. So yeah, Zayden would not mm-hmm. work with you, but what about, what about you? What do, what do you think about them as a couple though? Like as, as far as their relationship and is it believable? Do you, do you like how I think it works so. out? I think so. And like, I am always a fan of enemies to lovers, but I like them specifically because they've never really felt like enemies. Like, they were enemies by circumstance, not really like it's not that she really disliked him or he really disliked her. Sure. They disliked where they came from. And it wasn't even it was almost like everyone else parental. disliked them. Right. You know, exactly. like exactly. It, it was like everybody else thought they shouldn't work. It's like they never really thought that. Exactly. Themselves. And like I think because a lot of times in in books like this, especially when the female main character is like more frail, it kind of falls on that male protagonist to like build her up. But I feel like I like this book so much because I think she does the same for him. Like it's not a book that's just like Zayden trying to convince Violet that she can be strong and get her stronger and all this stuff. But like, and I compare it a lot to Akatar in my brain, and I don't want to talk about that because I know neither one of you have like read. I like thought you just mispronounced Avatar, so I don't know what you're oh, talking about. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but I like it better than the love interest. Like, I like the relationship better in this book than that book. Okay. But because I feel like Violet almost gives as much to Zayden as Zayden gives to her. Okay. So it feels like an actual adult relationship. And like, uh, yeah, when I, they I argue, it's like, I don't just side with one of them. Like... She'll be like, well, you keep secrets from me. And he's like, well, you don't ask me anything because you're afraid of the answer. And I'm like, that's a good, like, I don't that's disagree. A good point. Yeah. Let's put a pin in that because I actually have a rant about that in just a minute. But yeah. Blue, what do you think? I want to hear your opinion now, too. I mean, I'm agreeing with everything that you guys are saying. Like, mm-hmm. and I think that the nice thing is, is that even though Zayden brings the strength and the physical aspect, I mean, like, let's face it, Violet, mm-hmm. like, if she can throw things, she's good. 
But like, if you are like this close to each other, Zayn has you. Like Zayn is stronger that way. I, but yeah. I, I feel like what? I totally agree with you. Oh yeah, but I feel like while he has that strength, she's got the we need to think about this component and mm-hmm. we need to process mm-hmm. it more than you just saying yes, it's here. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. and so I feel I like think, yeah. that balance. Right. I feel like it makes them a strong couple, but not necessarily like one is bigger than the other one. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I or think like they balance each has other. that upper that upper thing. I feel like they're pretty even keel. Yeah, and then even because of both of their tra- like traumas, I mean, let's face it, Violet's traumas from her mom being a complete witch to her, and from witch thinking her brother was killed. I mean, she and that, her dad. Yeah. I mean, she's had a lot of trauma mm-hmm. to yeah. Zayden and, having his you know, dad literally executed, you know, and then yeah. as we find Being out, whipped it was 107 times by Violet's mom. Yeah. Yeah. So ugh. like, I feel like they are like they recognize the trauma in each other. Mm-hmm. And when a tr- like when one of them has a traumatic flare up. It's not like I'm going to brush it off or I'm going to get mad at you for responding that way. Sure. Oh, I agree. You know? I, I feel like they're very like knowledgeable of each other's trauma. Mm-hmm. And I like and that, that there's not that whole misunderstanding trope that happens in so often in books is the misunderstanding happening and then being like, well, I didn't realize it's because of this, which I feel like happens with her and Dane. Like constantly. Yeah. Yeah. constantly and so i like that they're even they're able to separate like when something happens they're like i'll just leave him alone or I'll leave her alone or i'll just be here like i really think that they are a realistic healthy couple yeah. i do too which brings me to the one thing i wanted to complain about and uh i'm i might get yelled at because i am i'm again i'm the male in between these two <laughs> so take this with a grain of salt Violet takes way too friggin' long to get over the fact that he kept yes. state secrets from her. Okay? I agree. I get it. I get it. You need to... Okay. Woo, woo, this is going better than I thought. No, I agree. I get it. Like, you feel betrayed, especially because the thing he lied to you about was your brother, Brennan, being alive. I totally mm-hmm. understand that. However, he literally says, look, it's a state secret. I can't tell you that because Dane would have read your mind. And he's right. He's proven mm-hmm. right because Dane did do that. And she mm-hmm. still is super mad. And then he even says, I will tell you anything you ask me as long as it doesn't like jeopardize like all of the people that we're trying to protect. And she's like, unacceptable. And I'm like, what do you want? Yeah. Like, Well, it's also I, like you're not mad at Brennan. You're not mad at Brennan at all for being alive and not that telling you. That made me you. so. Uh, Although their hold sister on. is. Can we <laughs> can we just pause and say that one of the best parts in Iron Flame is when Mira finds out that Brennan's alive and, and she, she just, just walks up and punches, punches, him. punches him. <laughs> Yes, I love that. Punches him right in the face. I, I laughed it. so hard when uh, that happened. I was like, "Thank you, yeah. thank you." You, know, you think it's going to be this tearful reunion, and she just socks him, and it's it's yeah, great. I love Mira. But she's one of my favorites. Violet spends way too much of Iron Flame not getting over this. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And and I, I totally get it. I mean, I get it. He he was not truthful with her. But he had a reason and it was a good reason. And he was right. Mm-hmm. OK. And, and that's and he, the thing is that she knows that he's right. And that's the thing is even when she's like thinking about it, she knows that he shouldn't have told her. Mm-hmm. And she still can't get over it. But it's also like if she were in his shoes. How would do you think she would be? You know what I mean? Like, if she was as patriotic, she wouldn't have told him either. Here's the thing. Here's the one thing I want to say about that is, and I feel like she did this worse in Iron Flame than she did in Fourth Wing because she actually figured out how to keep her mouth shut in Iron Flame. But like, <laughs> she did all kinds of stuff that Zane was like, do not do. And she's like, okay, here I am. I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And then she didn't tell him. And mm-hmm. like she got mad that he got mad that she did it. Yeah. And it was like it was information that you needed. And yes, mm-hmm. I understand that you're mad that like I didn't follow your instructions. But like But you, you also can't... can't like especially given what happened to the rebels at the hands of your mom. Yeah. Like even if he loves you, 
like, like you, he doesn't know that you could keep something that big hidden from her. Yeah. Well, and the other thing too is the more that Wolfkin says this, the more that I'm remembering that it really bothered me in Iron Flame. Why can't he just volunteer little pieces of information? Sure. Like the big mm-hmm. pieces. Okay. Ask a question. I will tell you the answer if I can. But like the fact that he's like the king of Tyrandor or like the mm-hmm. king of wherever mm-hmm. he is, like that's just something like, oh yeah, by the way, this is like, this is a thing. I, like, I agree. Mm-hmm. There's things that he could volunteer mm-hmm. that right. she doesn't need to ask him. And he's like, you have to ask me everything. Like, I'm not going to volunteer the fact that my favorite color is blue or, you know, like whatever it's going to be. And like, that is something that you could just be like, I don't like shrimp, you know? Yeah. Not a fan. I I think that they're, they're both a little bit too extreme. Proud. They're too proud. Yeah. But I mean. Cause I will, I will, I, I think I'm just a Zayden apologist. So I, I. Sorry for that. But <laughs> I will say, I think the point of him saying you have to ask me was to prove that she doesn't really want the truth. Uh, She's I think mad about mad. being lied to, but like she didn't actually want to know the truth. Right. And yeah. so I think that was her po- his point of like, well, ask me. And because she didn't ask me, he's like, well, you don't want to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree with that. But like, mm-hmm. I think it was an iron flame. Like he was telling her like these are all the reasons i love you mm-hmm. and like it was a very touching thing but it was like i know that you and this is not true word for word so i'm just making stuff up but he's like i know that you like orange marmalade on your toast in the mornings or i know mm-hmm. that you like you, right. like apples after 4 p.m or you know like just little like things like that stuff, yeah. and then like you turn around and She's like, well, I can't say anything like that because I don't know because mm-hmm. I have to ask you about it. And it's just like that was the it. thing that was really bothering me yeah. because it was like there are so many little things that like she's not noticing. Sure, right. she can mm-hmm. ask about. But there's also those little things that like he could have volunteered. I think you it's know? like they're they're making this relationship harder than it needs to be. Absolutely, they are. And I'm Absolutely. like, yes I know it's no. for the plot. I know it's for the plot that it's a five book series and we're in book two. I get it. But it's infuriating. Yeah. Like, yeah, if they would both just. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little sorry, feedback. A little feedback. Uh, if they would both just chill for just a second right if he would just volunteer just a little bit of information Mm -hmm. and she would just understand that there are going to be things that he has to keep secret at in the moment like he can't Mm -hmm. tell you this until later right right yeah i mean they just anyway she was driving me nuts okay i know this is going to be awkward because we're all family here but just out of a rating system a zero out of ten what would you rate the sex scenes in this in these books Like one being worse and ten being best, or vice yes. versa. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Who rates one the best? <laughs> I mean, you count down, and you, you like one is always the top pick. <laughs> okay, sure. Like, it's, look at any rating, radio not a station. Ranking. They're like, and the number one choice is this. It's a difference in rate yeah. and rank. All right, go. We're gonna rate, rate. it. Bullion World first. <laughs> I'm going to go like seven or eight mm. because I, six. I, I found it. Oh, I rolled my eyes so hard when they first had sex and like she exploded like the closet and the windows. I was like, like well, that's how you know you're that's doing when it you're right. That's going to pop up. But like, I know Wolfkins had a problem with whenever uh, the reader said the word clit. I didn't. No, no, no. All right, Excuse hold on. Me. Don't, 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 don't throw me under that bus. You said that canceled, canceled. <laughs> I just said it was interesting. He how hates women. 
<laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, I hate women. I just the way the reader would just drop it in so casually. I've just never heard the word "clit" used so casually in conversation before. Uh, was all. You've not read nearly enough smut. Definitely not. <laughs> so what is what is your ranking then? Mine was a six. A six. Yeah. Yeah. What what did, what did what you what, ranking, what did you Sarah? want? <laughs> or sorry, mommy. Okay. What did you want? <laughs> okay, it was probably an eight or a nine until the second book in the throne room, and it's a fucking ten. Oh, the throne room yeah. was good. The throne room <laughs> it was is a ten. The throne room was great. See, I was that, at work. That's the thing. He could have he could have quite easily volunteered and been like, "You're sitting on my chair, like pulling a Sheldon," and he didn't. Yes, because when I think of sex scenes, I think of Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, if he had done that, okay, fucking twelve. Wolfkins and I are Wolfkins and I are watching Big Bang right now. So, like, I know I thought that reference was like out of left field. <laughs> no, like you're sitting in my spot. Like he, Zayden could have quite easily said to Violet, "Like this is my chair." Would you you know, up? like, but it wasn't about him in that moment. It was oh. all about her. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That was a good. Y'all are that's crazy. one of those pieces of information he could have quite easily volunteered instead of us learning about it like 150 pages later. I've got to go back because I'm still not over it. How is this a six? What else would you have wanted? I don't know. What don't know. more could no. they have given you to make it a ten? Fifty Shades, probably. I was gonna say, what kind of? I it's know just, that I don't do want anything of, to do. They do with a lot this of vanilla dynamic. sex. <laughs> just vanilla they just keep having sex it's just like the same stuff Blue no, I blink do... twice if you're in danger <laughs> I do, I do... <laughs> okay let's <laughs> hold up I it's not it's not that it's just that if you're gonna do it a lot in these books I just I like let's get some spice and variety in there now the, there are interesting ones like the throne room was great <laughs> I do, I do like it, man. The the see, this is where this is where I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, I do like it. You said you didn't like it, but I like the scenes where like they're blowing everything up. You know, like when they start having sex, and then the like the window explodes and stuff like that. Hell yeah, yeah. I mean, I I thought it was okay. Fine, I'll give it a seven. How's that? Can I can I up it to I'm seven just, and get you off my I back? I'm just blowing my my brain is so blown that you wanted more. Weird. I will like, say, I feel like I've learned way too much about you, and I don't want you. Ask. I don't know that I want to talk to you anymore. I will say, let me just say this really fast. I will say, I love when they're having sex, and Zayden just throws his shields up to make like, oh, or ma- throws yes. his shadows up to make like a little shield for them. I love yes. that. I think it's so cute. I think it's so mm-hmm. sweet. Like, I'm like, oh, look, you're trying to care even when you're, like, on the verge of, like, coming, you know, like. Mm -hmm. My favorite part, though, I will say this while we're talking about sex, is just the carnal desire of the dragons being so overwhelming (laughs) that it incapacitates Violet. Dude, I love it. So that's funny. that's true passion right there, Tarrant and Sigel. That's true passion. We should have been able to. We should have had a chapter on that. <laughs> Let's that's talk about what's going that's on why over it's there. A six. Yeah, it's a six because we can't it's see the dragon. Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is also sex adjacent. I love that Rihanna will fuck anybody in the quadrant. <laughs> so I got a little <laughs> confused by that because it seemed like. Yeah, was she doing that? Because there was also there was also Tara, right? Who seemed like a steady kind of. Yeah, Tara was her steady hookup, but I mean, she had sex with Sawyer. She had sex with okay. Rick. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so, but I got confused because I guess it was my monogamy brain. I'm like, what? aren't you with Tara? <laughs> I was like, what's happening right now? It's because Although you never know like... if you're gonna die, so you gotta fuck who Fair. you can. So I feel like that also calls back to what Mira told her, like right before she crossed parapet. She was like. If you want to have sex, have sex because like there's no guaranteeing mm-hmm. tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, and I was just like, "All right, Mira, like, what have you done? Go you know, clean. like, is yeah. there groups? <laughs> like- I know. I just imagine Rihanna and having like orgies in her room casually. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But my dick is not take- invited. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, dude, you can't. No, you can't come in. 
<laughs> no. What, what, are y'all, what are y'all doing in there? Mm, you wouldn't. You wouldn't like it. <laughs> I've been on club. so much <laughs> since I finished the book. I got onto like fourth wing TikTok, and there's so many funny skits of just like Riddick, just like being there during like the biggest things happening, and it's just mm-hmm. so funny. So while we're talking about secondary characters, I think we need to take just a moment and discuss Liam. <laughs> we have to. I think we should, because I think it's like... He deserves it. We've talked about him, and you know we've already alluded to the fact that he dies, because we've talked about her talking to him. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that pretty much gutted me. Like, that was... Destroyed. All of the characters. It was him Mm -hmm. or Rhiannon that would have just totally destroyed me. And Okay, so wait. Take Riddick. Take Riddick. (laughs) Yeah. Or Sawyer. I feel like... Yeah, take Sawyer. At, At this point, I feel like... If people are still listening and they haven't read Fourth Wing or Iron Flame and we're just spoiling the crap out of Liam's death, mm-hmm. we need to go an back hour a little and 15 bit. minutes in and they, they've already been spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just and saying. And on Game of Thrones. Thanks. And True. on our sex lives. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, just like the fact that he was like, okay, fine, I'll act as like Violet's bodyguard. Like, mm-hmm. Okay, sure, he was following, like, a king's order because, spoiler alert, Zane's the king Mm -hmm. of the rebellion. But, like, the fact that he took it into, like, a friendship was just a total, a total another layer. Yeah, And it wasn't, like, the whole trope of, like, an unwilling bodyguard. Like, it wasn't even that he was following orders. It's, like, he just... Like, loved Zayden, like he t- calls it, him yeah. right, and he calls him like his big brother, and mm-hmm. he was just like, yeah, sure. And then he's like, oh, I like Violet. This is fun. Like he was just so such a happy character. Yeah, and and by and the then time with of his, his little whittles, his little whittles. Oh yeah, those were so cute. I hope I need <clears throat> if anyone is listening that has an Etsy shop and can whittle, if you would whittle like dragons, like Liam, like oh yeah, whittle Stegail, and I would buy the shit out of those. <laughs> and I think by the time of his death, he'd kind of become Violet's second best friend behind Regan. Yeah. Like, I mean, I she they were very close by the time yeah. he died. And it's just and he died because his dragon was killed, right? That's, that's Yeah, but his dragon was out. killed protecting Tarn and Right, right, right. Violet. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just it was so sad. I don't even And think- her like holding him. Yeah, I don't think anything in Iron Flame even tops how sad no. that was. Mm-mm. Like, I don't think anything that came out of the second book. Mm-hmm. And, and the ramifications of that are felt throughout that second book. Yeah. Especially when his little sister comes to the parapet, and she's mm-hmm. just a little bitch at first. <laughs> like, she's like, But the I little hate letters, the, when the he, little, she yeah. gives her the letters, and he's like, you'll like Violet. She's not her mom. I was like. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I get where her, what's, it, what's her sister's name? Clone. Sloan. I, I get where she's coming from, but good yeah. lord, like tone it down. I thought we were going to have another Jack on our hands. I really mm-hmm. did. I was like, are we going to yeah. just redo this, but with Sloan? But right. she seemed to she seemed to get her crap together. So, wow. Where do you think book three is going to go? Because right now, I mean, the college is kind of still there, right? Well, I think they're going to have to move to the college, right? That's kind of what I gathered is that their new headquarters was going to have to be the college. At the college. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I think so. I think the one thing to point out, though, is that, the and again, last spoiler alert here, the very last thing we find out is that in order to save Violet during the last little battle of Iron Flame, Zayden goes venom. He, he taps into the... My, energies around him in order to defeat one of the one of the people trying to kill her and from what they say it, what, what was it you you actually word for word yeah it's not it, about yeah but, it's not a you can't treat it you can only control it yeah what do we think's going what, what do you think's going to happen because that he goes to talk to jack i remember this mm-hmm. now and jack's mm-hmm. like yeah, sucker <laughs> like yeah well what do we think i mean i ha- think that if think anybody if anybody can find a cure, it's Violet, just because Agreed. she is so smart. So either there's going to be a cure, or it's going to be one of those situations where, you know how, like, the first book, like, uh, Navarian's the good guy, Tyrandor's the bad guy. 
and then it flips. That's how and we then thought. Tear yeah. doors. Yeah, and Tear Doors a good guy, and they're the bad guys. What if it flips again? And it's like mm. there's some like the Venom are actually whatever. I don't well, know that that's necessarily going to happen, but I I could see there being more to the Venom thing than then just being like violent killing monsters. Well, the the Venom have a point. Like, mm -hmm. look, you all are controlling all of the power. The way that mm -hmm. this is structured, there is no power for the people. You have it all in that college, and I mean they they have a point. Uh, what do you think, Blue? Do you think this is going to negatively infect, or do you think it's just going to up their sex scenes to a nine and a half? Ooh. <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't know. I think there's going to be some nine and a half moments. But I will say, because of Zayden's work outside of the college mm -hmm. in Iron Flame, I feel like they can't necessarily say that like these people have all the power anymore. Because right. now there's like sure. Griffin writers who are coming sure. into play, and now you have more of that like diversity. Yes, the dragons are still like top dog. Let's face it; mm -hmm. like nobody's gonna nobody's gonna go above a dragon. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I'm kind of curious to see in book three how the dynamic between Indarna and Tarn are is going to continue to move oh, to. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. because. You know, in book two, we found out she's basically her own den. Yeah. And she, you know, like, she's the only one that's been born in, again, makes whatever the number is, six hundred fifty years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Which would make and her like, higher, higher him. priority. Yeah, she would be above him, I guess, now. I didn't think about yeah. that. Yeah. But, like, is Taryn still going to Hell. consider to be bonded with Violet? Like, is he going, like, what is that going to mm. look like? You mm. know? Yeah. Because Andarna in book two, like her wing wasn't developed enough to carry a writer. So that's right. Is it they said going she would never be... be able to. That's what they told right. her. Yeah. So wow. what's that going to look like? You know, I mm. mean, how is yeah. the dyna you know how is the dynamic between Violet, Andarna, and Tarn going to continue to play out? I mean, let's face it, Tarn is a big old grumpy dude. But at the same mm -hmm. time, he's also a big old softy. He's a big softy. You know, so soft. he, he like, better not go anywhere. He better not be going. I don't anywhere. think. I don't personally think he'll go anywhere. Another dragon dynamic I'm I'm curious to see is Scale and Taren because Scale, Scale kept that secret. Scale. It's Scale. Gale with an S. Scale. <laughs> I'm curious. Like, <laughs> have you seen it spelled? Yes. No. Oh, it's like S G A E L. Yes, Segale. you have because you made a fable about it. You made a post oh, on fable. Yeah, I did oh, do that. Oh yeah, I um, had to look it up for that. Oh yeah, I remember thinking that's dumb. <laughs> yeah, but because she kept the secret. Also, we haven't talked about this. This is going to be a super. I don't know if you are going to split this into two parts, but this is so long. Know. We're already but, at an hour and twenty. I'm let's yeah. Go. <laughs> but so no we have not talked screaming. about. Right. We have not talked about that Zayden has two signets because oh, right. it has been a secret that his that scale was his grandfather's dragon. Well, that wasn't so much a secret, but the manifestation of his second one was. Well, right? it was a secret because everyone said it was a close relative, but it was not like his grandfather. It was oh, like a great yeah. uncle You're or right. something like that. You're right. So it was a big secret. And it's also a secret that Zagale kept from Tarn. Oh yes, yeah. Oh, because they're fighting now, are they? At the end yeah. of Iron yeah. Flame, they're At all the yeah. So, they're, they're yeah, troubles so there between those two. And like a bonded, a bonded pair of dragons is stronger than a bonded dragon and rider. Right. So I'm interested to see what happens there, and if their relationship. Because I always wonder too if Zayden and Violet, even though I think they're a perfect couple, had a strong initial attraction because their dragons are mated. Well, so. It I'm curious be to see initially if, because he right. wasn't bonded to Violet. So right, oh, that's true. But in the beginning. I want, yeah. But I wonder if it will affect them in some way. You know mm. what I mean? If like they start fighting, I don't think that you they could unbond by any means. But I'm curious to see what plays out with that. Yeah, do they have because if Violet divorce? was pissed, I don't know. If Violet was pissed about Zayn keeping secrets before. <laughs> Yeah, well, she Violet, is going to be a nightmare in book three. I know, I know, but she knows, right? She knows about the yeah, venom. she knows. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing, but she doesn't a- know that he turned Venom. Yeah, she does. Yeah, because, she saw him at the very. Oh yeah, end. you're right. Yeah, yeah. she saw yeah. him at the cliff, and his eyes were red. Now we should also point out that his second signet, his first one's the shadows. His second signet was turns out he's in. Why are you shaking your head? Is this the thing you don't want to spoil? No, it switched. His first signet, the one that oh, came yeah. out first, oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah, the yeah. one that that um, Navar kills everybody for. Yeah, in- so, because it's. Yeah, it's an intention. Yeah. So he can like so, read the intentions of people. Yeah. Yeah. And his second one because was it book one where somebody had an intrinsic like that was their power mm-hmm. and like the they professor just like crushed his skull in the courtyard and yeah. like yeah. went to drink tea or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Yeah. So You're right. his that first one manifested one, first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his first one was that intrinsic and he kept his mouth shut until Hope he was hoping a second one would manifest, right. and the shadows came through. Mm-hmm. But yeah, now yeah, there are uh, there were hints, by the way, throughout the book, because there were times when she mm-hmm. would think something, and he would comment on her thought or make a comment that was so close. I was like, it's close. like, I, and it, because I was doing an audio book, there were times where I was like, did she say that? Like, did I misinterpret what that was? Right. But uh, yeah, so there were there were hints there that he was reading her mind uh, before mm-hmm. now. But yeah, so that's another thing. Of course, she feels betrayed by that because she was like, you've been reading my mind this entire time. And I, I still mm-hmm. can't, you know, don't know all this stuff like Bloomer was saying, like, you don't even know what my favorite color is or whatever. Well, and- I think it's also the betrayal of like not being able to trust that. Like his love for her is genuine and not sure and not manufactured from the fact that he could read her intentions. Right, right. So, but imagine that... if he couldn't though, because when he would have found her in the tree, if yeah. he couldn't read her intentions, he probably would have just killed her. Oh, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So it really is one of the reasons they fell in love is because he f- knew he could trust her. But and so I, she I, can be mad, but it's like imagine if he didn't have that power. Like this could have been such a different story. Did, did she figure it out or did he tell her? She figured it out. She figured it out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. And then he just, just confirmed it. it. Okay. Yeah, because she's a smart, smart cookie. Well, yeah, she is smart. I just don't remember what clues led her to that. And that's another thing I love about Violet is that even though she's physically not strong, like she is so smart. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and I like, and you know, it's that scribe background, but I think that's what Mm -hmm. she really brings to the writer's quadrant because the rest of them, they're not dumb, but they are not scribes. Like, Mm -hmm. they're that's not what they're there for. Yeah. So, and and, in book two, much to Zayden's chagrin, when he says, don't do this, she plays scribe for the rebellion. I mean, Mm -hmm. she's basically the rebellion scribe, along with uh, one of the cutest side characters on the planet. Um, Disney. Jacinia. Yeah. I, I love, love Jacinia. And Jacinia and Sawyer. So love cute. It. So cute. They are they him are learning my, uh, to sign. Yeah. For her. Yeah. They're my they're my OTP. That's 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 my ship. That's Those your two. dated reference is the OTP, but I love it. <laughs> I'm so my little fan fiction heart <laughs> loves it. Get ready because uh, February is gonna be uh, we're gonna be right in that zone. Right in there. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I'm excited. So I actually have, I think it's back here. Yeah. Right so there. we have gone on for a while to your point. So let's, I guess, start trying to wrap it up. Uh, you ask about the overall sex scene. I'll ask about your overall, how do you feel about the book in general? Oh. Like, what would you give the book? I, like the, I, both I, books, the series. Okay. So like on a zero to five or zero to 10. Well, let's, let's do this right. Okay. The, the bigger number is going to be the highest rating. I, yeah. Yeah, uh, I got that. Let's do 10. Okay. Or do you like five stars? Like, let's do five stars. Five stars. Okay. I don't know. No, but but there are not... five acorns, because they're they'll skip with the squirrel oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, I... It takes a lot to give me a five-star book. It's a five-star. It's a five-star okay. series. I genuinely... It has been a long time, because I'm also a Sarah J. Mass girl, and, like, I mm-hmm. love Thorn of Glass, and... Court of Thrones and Roses, and those books made me feel something and like really solidify themselves as a place in my brain. And this book series, 
I I think I like it better than Court of Thorns and Roses, and that's a okay. big thing for me. Wow! But it just the characters are so just like un- if you can evoke that kind of emotion in me when a character dies, yeah. or that kind of fear in me when something is happening and you don't know how it's going to turn out, like then it's not even just a a commendation to the story, but to the author herself, I'm like. Very- just as like because i nitpick writing like i'll be like well that's predictable and i try to come up with like like I, i'm really bad at reading thrillers because i try to predict the twists and all yeah. that but i this book genuinely surprised me by how good it was and it's five for me five acorns okay. all around five acorns uh mm-hmm. what about you blue let's hope this works um, so I am in the same camp as Suriname. I would give it five stars and it takes a lot for me to give a book five mm-hmm. stars. I usually only do it if it's something that I will reread, which is something I don't do hardly ever. Exactly. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm an Outlander fan and that's the only book that I've consistently reread. Mm-hmm. Um, I will give like this book. I don't know if I necessarily w- We'll give it five stars because I want to reread it, mm-hmm. but I'm giving it five stars because the world building is really good. The character development is superb mm-hmm. and the story itself. Like I just, I want more of the story mm-hmm. and I feel like that's the major component of a five-star book for me is like, if I want more of the story and then the author delivers on more of that story and doesn't just like ram it into the trash can. Sure. Like, Mm-hmm. it's amazing because you know like there are longer series out there who by like book four or five the author's just like pooling for like oh i said that it was going to be five books and now it has to be five mm. books so now i'm just gonna you know throw right. random stuff in there that doesn't exactly make yeah just pulling from game of thrones. To get, <laughs> yeah sorry just pulling from nowhere like the story feels like it has a trajectory and it's following that trajectory yeah like everything yeah. is intentional. Like the for- like even just outline. the foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. imagine yeah. that. Just yeah. like a foreshadowing of small things from the first book that's in the second book. Like this yeah. is such a well thought out process. Well, I mean, so yeah, I, I just the foreshadowing is great because even if you think about it, I mean, I think the three of us all enjoyed Harry Potter, but there was mm-hmm. definitely times where you're like, all right, you're making that up as you go. Like yeah. that was not intended from the beginning. But with especially this book, as an adult, like you, yeah. th- you think of plot holes, and you're like. Yeah, oh, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I do think that you're on to something that this is this is much more structured and thought out, I think, mm-hmm. which I think will overall lead to a better uh, a better series by the end. Yeah. So we got five acorns and five acorns. Yeah, I'm sticking with the acorn thing because we got to. Are you going to be it. the are you going to be the asshole that doesn't give a five acorns? One and a half acorns. No, <laughs> I, <laughs> not enough sex scenes. <laughs> I will. I mine was four and a half. I didn't go. Okay. I didn't go straight five. I, I was four and a half. Um, because yeah, not enough. Not enough Fifty Shades, of course. <laughs> like you got Zayn. No one was all, tied up once. He's all about the shadows, and we're not gonna we're not gonna delve into that. Whatever. No. Um. Overall, yes, this was a tremendous book. I agree with everything you say. I do think Iron Flame was a little long. It, it could have been just mm-hmm. a little shorter. It, it actually felt like two books. There's you know part one and yeah. part two is a very decisive split. Yeah, I actually think it might have worked better as being this being book one, two, and three, because uh, Iron Flame is very long, and the part one and part two do feel so even thematically different from one another mm-hmm. that it was a little jarring because it, it was it was like I was. It was a totally new book. different. Yeah, that's true. Not 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 that. a bad thing. I mean, it's just that just the the pacing of that felt a little bit. Um, just a little ran on a little long. So four and a half. Yeah. Okay, I'm not being a total jerk. It's just four and a half. No, not, uh, I get it. But I uh, get it. you know, but no, I came I into this thinking me and Kate were going to argue about it, and it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think you know, I think this is a good one to start with because I think it was a low bar fruit that we were all going to like. I do think mm-hmm. as time goes on, we're going to get ones that Very we're going to disagree on, and this yeah. is going to be a much more combative episode. Uh, but no, this one I, I kind of thought we were all jiving on the same page. Here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, but yeah, I mean, the only the only thing that was really keeping me from just going full in five was just there were times, especially in Iron Flame, where it just um, a little. it just drug a little bit mm-hmm. like that. That's all there is to it. I mean, yeah. it's just a very long, long book. And um, as much as I like Varish being killed off midway, 
uh, that did feel like something that could have happened at the end of a book because it was such a mm-hmm. big moment. And then this threat that had been there from the beginning just isn't in the back. Yeah, I did feel book. like he died very like, oh, he's dead now. Yeah, yeah. so I it was great, though. I am glad that he did. Yeah. Anyway, so that will be it for our uh, our review of Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. But Bloomeral, do you want to hold up and tell us about our book for February? Because we are yep. going to be doing... So... Spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Go ahead. Let's <laughs> have it. So for next time, we're going to talk about spoiler alert. We decided to go... We, I mean, Suriname and I, decided <laughs> that we were going to do... <laughs> I was not in this <laughs> uh, love book since February is the month of love. Sure. Um, yeah. And she has it on her shelf, so she doesn't have to spend any money. Yeah. And this one's from the library. Yeah. That was that was the big thing. <laughs> We're cheap. So here at the nutty yeah. nut book. Club. I am almost. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna spoiler alert you. I'm almost done with this book, and it is so freaking cute. Um, I can't wait. I'm it, doing it as an audiobook because I'm in the car a lot driving to work. So that's how I do a lot of these big books that we are going to do. Um, but the two main characters are Marcus and April. April's a geologist and you will want her as your best friend for you yeah. for life. She's amazing. I love She's that. such I love a strong that. character. I love it. And Marcus has dyslexia. And he is very in tune and is very aware of how people respond to him. And honestly, the dynamic between the two, I am loving. Yeah. So that's also, all I'm going to give you. Little, that's all little the teaser I'm going to give you for spoiler alert. I can't just don't happen. Is it's, <laughs> is it, it's about fan fiction and OTPs. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's why I picked it up in the first place. That's all okay. fan fiction. I'm like, I got to have this. Wolfkins is doing this as book version. So that's why we mm-hmm. have it. Look at how far he is. Tell him to speed up. Suriname um, <laughs> hasn't even started it. <laughs> I'm doing it as an audiobook. The audio reader is fantastic. Um, it's just one person, so oh, okay. you don't get yeah. she does a great male voice though. I will mm-hmm. tell you that. This book would have actually worked with two. The way yeah. the chapter is right. right. So uh yeah, so Olivia Dade, right? Yes. yes. Olivia Spoiler. Dade wrote it. Um it is a standalone, but there are side character or there are supporting characters in here that she's created two other books about. So mm-hmm. I might go down the rabbit hole and oh, talk yeah. about that um, next time we record. But at least for this one, you can just read it on its own and then just move on with your life. But it's super cute and it is fanfic and OTP about a show similar to Game of Thrones, but oh. all about Greek gods. It's it's definitely yeah. throwing some shade at Game yeah. of Thrones. I, I love it too. We will get into that next time though. Yes. So uh, if you guys read A Fourth Wing and Iron Flame watching this, go ahead, let us know what you thought about it in the comments. And if you'd like to keep up with the Nutty Nook Book Club, a couple different ways you can do that. We're going to be doing these monthly as we finish the books because we don't read that fast. So once a month, we'll have a new episode where we go over the previous month's books like we said uh the one from february will be spoiler alert uh we will do one book at a time this was a weird one because we both just couldn't or both all we three just, of us just couldn't yeah stop. we just read it so fast <laughs> um but there's some other ways i will put a link to the wolfkins tabletop discord in the comments if you want to join that we talk we can talk about it there and then if you have the fable fabled fables Big fable fable app uh, fable. it's basically book twitter Facegram, Facegram. Oh my god, I'm so old. I just said Facegram. Facebook Twitter, for those of you who are just, confused, what Facegram is right now, just said it's Facegram. book Twitter, and it's oh, awesome. It's uh, it's actually uh, it's actually X now. X. Anyway, yes, it is awesome. We have an official Nutty Nook book club on <laughs> the facial expressions on that. Uh, so you can, if you'd like to join that, there we have some discussions going on. So. Uh, yeah, that'll be it. I want to say a wonderful thank you to Suriname and Bloomworld because I know that, especially you, Bloomworld, because I know that doing stuff like streaming and stuff is not really your favorite thing to do, but I do know you like reading and I appreciate you doing this with us. So thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be us. I think we had a pretty good discussion. I can't wait till we disagree on something though, because I want to argue. Yeah. No, not that one. This one over here. <laughs> Yeah, this was way too amicable. We got to do yeah. something different. We got to get something more divisive in here. Yeah. March, I get to pick, and it's going to be like 
Dungeons and Dragons. God, it's going to be a Warcraft <laughs> novel. And nobody I haven't read a Warcraft read. novel in a while. <laughs> I haven't read one of those in a while. I could think of something that you wouldn't like, though. Probably. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, and again, if you'd like to check out, check out the Discord or Fable, and let's read some books together. And we will see, well, I'll see you, Blue, in about five minutes when I come upstairs. And Suriname, I hope I don't have to see you for months. But... Well, you're going to see me in like two weeks, unfortunately. Oh, God. Okay. Can we make sure it's on a Saturday that we see you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we got stuff. We got plans on Sunday. Okay. All right, we got stuff to do. Like, our plans are this, and you're like here. So I get it. But also, well, unless you're going to babysit, then we can, we can flip flop. Yeah, I know. Bit. I know. Unless I'm watching Kidkins, which Kidkins is fun to watch. I know. I've seen her, seen her walking around in the background <laughs> behind her. She is her. patiently waiting to talk to you, sir, not me. Okay. With patiently that, waiting. We don't, we don't let her be on the streams. So with that, we'll cut this here. Thank you all for reading with us, and we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye.